Well, good morning. Another beautiful morning here in northern Maine. And I uh, wanted to talk really quickly about the subject of gun confiscation in America is impossible. Um, <clears throat> I've been in the gun culture, I guess you could say, ever since I was a little boy. Uh, we hunted and we would target shoot when we had family get-togethers and things like that. Um, and always loved guns. And I mean, I was a little boy and I was raised, uh, raised that way. And I've come to understand that there's a lot of people that are anti-gun and that think it's wrong and horrible to have firearms and whatever. And they equate gun owners with, you know, bank criminals and whatever else and things. And uh, people in the government that they've been trying for years to take away firearms and to put limits on the amount of, you know, uh, ca the capacity of your magazines and your automatic, uh, semi-automatic handguns and rifles and whatever else. And just constantly trying to, you know, badmouth people that have firearms and, uh, you know, all my friends growing up had guns and uh, you know it, just to, to hear people demonizing gun owners just with a broad brush you know we're all bad people or something or the possibility of us to be bad and it's just always been such nonsense to me and uh, of course the you know it, it kind of waxes and wanes as, as far as um, how popular it is you know sometimes you have a it gets, seems to be more popular and the media really pushes the anti-gun thing and then it kind of backs off for a little bit, you know, and whatever. Um, but it's always there. There's people that just will not give up trying to take away my God-given rights uh, to have a gun. Um, and that's really what it is. And that's reason number one that uh, nobody's ever going to take away the firearms of the American people the true freedom loving ones i mean you have the i just have to say this you have the people that are just they'll willingly give up their rights for any reason at all they'll just say well you know okay well i guess you know they passed a law i'll turn in my guns okay you know well they're not really americans in my opinion america was founded under principles of people that don't want to be controlled and those people, um, those people retain their firearm rights, and they're not going to be told uh, you have to give those up by anyone. And uh, so, to just start out there, like I was saying, God-given rights. Okay, I have a right to personal defense, and the defense of my wife and uh, son. Um, and I live in an area, it's not super dangerous or anything, but we have bears around here. We have a uh, moose that can get cranky at times and whatever else. We have a few other things. It's not, you know, like I'm living in Alaska or anything. We don't have grizzly bear around here. Uh, or packs of wolves or anything. Um, but I have a right to personal defense. That's the first reason that you're not going to take away my guns or guns of any other freedom-loving American uh, that fears God more than they fear man. It's the Second Amendment, Second Amendment is not there to give us rights. The Second Amendment is there to reaffirm the rights that we have from God. It's very important to understand that. Okay, so uh, laws that man passes, you get a bunch of evil people coming into power. I mean, let's just say it this way. Let's just say that there's a Chinese invasion and the Chinese are actually able to take Washington, D.C. And they sit there and they say, oh, you know, we we passed law to ban guns. All guns must be turned in. All guns must be turned in. So, well, they're the law now. They're in Washington. They passed it. So I saw them right on live TV. They, they cut up the Second Amendment and they said it's null and void now. And so I have no choice because my new Chinese masters said that you know, I'm to turn in my guns, so I have to because the law there. No, uh, I don't care if they want to try to pass laws. Um, doesn't matter to me. 
I have a God-given right to personal defense. Uh, you say, well, there's no criminals out here. Like I, like I was saying earlier about, well, what about the, the animals? Okay. Um, I just shot a, a, a varmint yesterday that was messing around here on the property. Um, so, uh, but I guess I should just, you know, some bear comes running out of the woods or something. I should just hand-to-hand -hand combat or something. Or maybe I should just, you know, sit down on the ground and get my cell phone out and call the law or something on him. You know, no. Uh, I'm armed right now. Enough to take care of myself. Uh, so, uh, you're not going to take away my guns. I have a right to personal defense. And, I mean, even if you could have some kind of liberal dream come true where you would have everybody gets along and they and uh, we have this peaceful world and whatever else I still wouldn't give up my guns you say well there, but there's no crime we've eliminated crime and sin and whatever else uh, that can't happen but let's just say that it did for the sake of the argument um, okay no more evil well, what about uh, going out and having fun shooting targets I enjoy that. Uh, we all enjoy that. Even my son's getting into it now. Um, you can't just take that away from us. Uh, how can you make peace between man and animal? See, this whole anti-gun thing is really, they get into this philosophical thing, well, if we get rid of all the guns, then we'll have this peaceful world or something. Uh, how's that working out for the UK? That has gun control how's it working out for all the other countries that have gun control where people's firearms have been taken from them is it peaceful no it isn't you know that if you have any sense um so uh not going to work um but hey if you if the liberals are out there and they say we we want to take away the firearms well then how about you take away crime first uh come out with all your great new ideas and whatever and, uh, you know, show us how you can take away crime uh, by defunding the police and things. That's brilliant. But uh, another reason why American gun confiscation is impossible is because the future is going to move more towards corruption in the government. We're seeing that. There's a huge amount of corruption. And um, it's only going to become more corrupt in the future. This nation is falling apart. The dollar is collapsing. Uh, well, guess what happens when the dollar collapses? Um, more crime. Let me show you something here really quickly. You can see that thing right there at my fingers. This is called a beaked hazelnut. Uh, yeah, wild hazelnuts. We have them on our property here. Um, hard to get good ones because the squirrels like them and the there's a little worm or something that gets to a lot of them. And so it's hard to find good ones, but we have lots of them. So I'm going to probably be picking some of those here soon. Um, they, they're pretty good. Uh, eat, I've eaten them raw. I guess you could probably take them and roast them and whatever. But anyhow, just to show that there's a lot of wild edibles out in nature. If you might, if you live in a northern environment, you might have hazelnuts of some kind. So study that, check it out. But uh, getting back to my subject here, um, more corruption, more school shootings equals more. We can see, hey, the, the law is not there. They can't protect us from everything. The police are not able to just be there when anything happens. They're just right there at the spot. No. You know, well, it's good that the police are there to punish evildoers. That's Romans chapter 13. They're supposed to be a terror to the evil, not to the good. So good. I'm glad that the police are there to protect, serve and protect. That's wonderful when they can stop a school shooting and put a, one of these shooters out of their misery. Um, <clears throat> but that's not justification to take away guns because they're school shootings. And uh, if you've noticed... A lot of the recent school shootings have actually been leftists that have been doing it. Transgender people and whatever else. They go out and they commit violence thinking in their minds, well, if we want to take away guns, 
then the best way to do it is to increase gun violence so we have justification to take away the guns. Brilliant. Um, no, actually what you're doing is you're reinforcing gun owners' desire for guns. Um, <clears throat> you know, gun owners saying, you know what, all these school shootings, all this increase in crime, I might need more guns and ammunition. Uh, if you have any sense, you'll think that way. And I'm sorry to all the, you know, brethren in other countries that have gun control. I'm sorry your freedoms were taken from you. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, any kind of laws against guns, the only thing that they can do is they can pass laws on guns, but those, you know, to confiscate guns, but those are all voluntary. You cannot forcibly take guns from people. Um, I don't believe in that. There's always ways to get around the whole thing of gun control. And um, if you have a really wicked government and they come in and they send soldiers in and whatever else, well, at that point in time, you have to resist that and uh, to fight. And that is something that I would be willing to shed my blood for. I would be willing to die for that cause because they are going against one of my God-given rights. Three God-given rights. Again, let me cover those. Freedom of conscience. Freedom, you have free will. All right. Nobody has a right to come and tell you what to think and what to believe. That's your spirit. Okay, the spirit of your mind. Secondly, bodily integrity. Nobody has a right to come and tell me what to do with my body. You can't come and say to me, we're going to forcibly inoculate you we're going to forcibly uh, make you take pills or do whatever you cannot take away my bodily integrity not happening and the third one that's your flesh there spirit of your mind your body your flesh and the third one is your soul and the soul is when you feel uh hey something's really wrong here um this isn't good you feel danger you can't understand it you can't see it it's not something that you can understand with your mind but you just feel it they say your gut feeling um you know the bible actually the king james bible actually will talk about uh bowels and things in terms of um you think of a modern day they think of a bowel movement or whatever no that's not what it's talking about it's talking about that gut feeling you know that you just feel something's wrong that's personal defense so um, that's why our founding fathers here in America said about unalienable rights. And by the way, I just want to say this. Oh, the founding fathers, they were all Freemasons. No, they weren't. That is a lie. There were, I think there was John Witherspoon or something, I think. And he was a preacher. So one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he was not a Freemason. And there were a lot of guys that were anti-Freemason. And they actually had the anti-Freemasonic party in the 1800s. So, you know, learn your history a little bit better. I know it's exciting to get into the conspiracy thing and, da, 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 you know, the music plays and the founding fathers were all Freemasons. And this is the new Atlantis. This is the... You know. um, there were a lot of Bible-believing Christian people in America that uh, influenced the founding of this nation, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution. And, and some of you pointed out in the thing... The comments of the other video I did about why American patriotism is important and you said I won't defend the government but I'll stand for the Constitution I should have said that yes to clarify uh, I'm not going to stand for this corrupt wicked government that we have that does not follow the Constitution doesn't care about the Constitution or the American people I won't follow them but I will follow the Constitution and the Republic that this nation is supposed to be a Republic is a nation that's founded upon law just laws democracy is well the majority rules uh, we didn't have a democracy until the 20th century when they changed the thing of the republic to a democracy but that's another story and again well if we can just get the vast majority of people to sign petitions and be for laws and whatever that we can get rid of firearms we'll just say no more firearm ownership um, well, really sorry, but um, it's not going to work. Let me show you something else here quickly. I just looked over and saw these. 
sticking up here. Uh, yeah, that's them. Let me just spin this camera around. This is called uh, Indian pipe. It's actually an herb or ghost pipe. You can see right there. And uh, that stuff there, um, it actually, you can, you can get uh, like a high proof alcohol, like a really uh, 90 to 100 percent proof um, vodka or something like that, I think is what they use. I don't make it, you know, myself, but uh, you can get that stuff and add it to it and it will pull out the constituents from the herb and it's a very strong pain reliever. Um, you know, and you don't, you aren't drinking bottles of it or anything like that, just a few drops as a tincture, an herbal tincture, and uh, quite effective. Back when I injured my back, we got some Indian, or the ghost pipe tincture, and it was really very helpful, and non-habit forming or anything else, so, Unless you have weak character, I guess you could probably drink a lot of it or something, but it's pretty expensive if you buy it from other people, but it's out here. Just another one of the things that's out here. It's pretty amazing. I get a little distracted when it comes to natural health type of stuff out here on the property. But um, that brings me to another point. Another reason why American gun, gun confiscation is not possible is when you look at the vast size of America. Um, I'm walking on my land right now, and uh, we have a pretty big property that the Lord provided us with. And uh, um, and I have another, you know, property in town. And you want to come confiscate the guns? Well, from a legal perspective, you can't just come back onto a property as police officers that have no trespassing signs and purple posted paint and whatever else and it's gated you can't just say hey i'm coming back in there to talk to the guy um, you don't have the same rights as you do in town in town there's a i think it's called curtilage or something where there's kind of a, a legal area around the house that a delivery man can go into that and deliver a package without trespassing um you know there's it's sort of a legal thing in in uh if you study law well police officers obviously can come up to the door and ask you a question or whatever else and census workers and things and uh so there's that that uh if you're living in town or something well sure they can come up to your door and ask you questions and there's plenty of videos out there ATF agents harassing people you know coming up to their house and and uh, asking them about their guns or whatever but uh, how do you do it if people live out in the countryside like where I do how do you come up to my door without being in serious violation of multiple laws well they'll just do it they'll, they'll do it unlawfully okay but then you're going to have major problems uh, you know, they can, unless they get some kind of a lawful order and in some way that they can waive the thing of having to have a search warrant and they can just law, you know, lawfully with the corrupt law, just go to people's houses and confiscate. Well, you know, they're not going to do it that way. I mean, let's just think about the military operation that it would take to make something like that happen. Um, not possible. It is not possible. The amount of roads the miles that you'd have to travel what are you going to do get a little economy cars you know toyota priuses or something to go around confiscate guns to save on gas money uh no that's not typically how the military and law enforcement does things typically you'll have you know they'll drive some kind of a bigger vehicle or something i mean the the humvee is not the military vehicle anymore i think it's oshkosh something or other um what are you going to do drive those around who's going to pay for all the diesel i guess it's a diesel motor and those things uh think about that stuff i mean there's a lot of miles out there a lot of people that live in the middle of nowhere i mean yeah you have towns and and whatever that you could 
you know, encircle the town and make everybody bring their guns in, or, you know, you could do tyr tyrannical stuff like that. But uh, America is a very strange country. Um, we have uh, high northern areas, the, the taiga, like what this is. We have um, tundra, if you go up into Alaska. We have uh, southern swamps, cedar swamps down south. You're down to Louisiana and places like that, and Florida and, and things. We have uh, deserts here in America, in Arizona and places like that, Nevada and things. Um, you know, we have a lot of variety. The grass, the open plains of the Midwest, and all of these different things. And it's, you know, how are you going to dress for each one and whatever else? You know, there's a lot of variety. How do you send troops? And by the way, let me say that, on that note, how are, how are we ever going to have a nation, a foreign nation, come in and, you know, invade this country? You realize how hard that would be for a military? You say, well, we're, we're going to have a Chinese-Russian invasion someday of this nation. Well, if they bring Chinese troops in, and I realize that there are some Chinese and Russians already here, and people say that they're just sleeper cells. They're troops that will be ready to engage things. Um, okay, but you're still going to have the problem of supply. How do you supply those troops? Well, you get elements within the United States government to, to leave supplies for them. Yeah, I could see that happening. Um, but uh, the whole point is to have this... Uh, gun confiscation where we go out and we have you know uh officers knocking on doors and we're here for your guns we have a list of them and whatever um you know i've seen guys you know gun owner type guys and they'll say oh you know yeah i was, I was going out to do some target shooting the, about a month or so ago and I took my boat out on this lake and i had my guns and i was going over to this spot to shoot them and and i tipped my canoe and all my guns went to the bottom of the lake uh I don't remember what spot it was, you know, it was just pretty bad, and so I, I don't have any, you know, <laughs> and uh, what can you do? Um, and again, see, another thing is, once you see what happens in other countries where gun control takes place, uh, I know the Jews for protection of firearms, they came out with a video called uh, Innocence, Innocence Betrayed, and they show that every country has a deer fly get off of my camera every country that institutes gun control there's a bloody genocide that follows so we have learned from history we're not ignorant of history gun owners are not you know toothless toothless inbred hillbillies running around out in the woods you know wanting to fight the government or something uh no no uh we know we've learned from the, the lessons of history so you say, but as a Christian, you shouldn't be doing this stuff. This is wrong. Well, then why did Jesus tell his disciples to sell their garments and buy a sword? You know, oh, but he told uh, Peter that he wasn't supposed to use the sword. Yeah, because Peter was resisting the thing of Jesus dying on the cross. That's what it was about. Not that uh, Peter shouldn't have defended himself. There was no cause in Peter attacking the man there that came with the multitude that came out to get Jesus. There was no cause in that. You know, Peter wanted to start an insurrection or something, you know. He wanted to start a fight and say, no, you're not taking my Savior. He's not dying on the cross. Peter, he came to die on the cross. That's prophecy. Okay, and if he doesn't die on the cross, then you're not going to be saved. You won't go to heaven. So, Peter didn't quite understand that. But, um, so, don't get all upset, brethren, about all the talk that the liberals bring out, the news media... They'll come out and they'll say, you know, we're going to be passing gun legislation and whatever else. You can't legislate away people's right to personal defense. Uh, they can willingly give it up. They could say, you know, that uh, we have records of your guns, gun purchases and whatever else. Um, and, you know, uh, you we're going to... I mean, if they can get the central bank digital currencies in, then they can start to control some of the gun purchases and ammo purchases and whatever else. But uh, purchasing guns 
is a great way to maintain freedom. It's very important. There are some things that are spiritual. There are some things that are carnal. I'll just say it this way. In marriage, um, you have to be a strong spiritual leader, but there's a, the carnal thing there of providing for your wife, providing for your children. Um, you are, obviously, you can't just not provide. Oh, hey, you know, we'll just trust the Lord and we'll live and be homeless or something. You can't do it that way. You have to provide food and shelter and things and and take your wife out and, uh, on a date day or something, you know. You say, oh, it's not spiritual. You're not working, doing anything for the Lord when you're out, you know, taking your wife out on a special date or something. Uh, yeah, but you're supposed to do that. The Bible says the man that's married, uh, he that is married careth for the things of the world, how he may please his wife. A single man can attain to the things... Or just do the things of the Lord, yes. But a married man has to think about how to please his wife, how to prepare or provide for his wife, and how to do fun things and whatever else. That's what you have to do. So, um, so another rant video. But uh, I see a lot of people getting very fearful about the thing of gun confiscation and, oh, brother, what are we going to do if they try to take our guns away? They can't. Just remember that. They can't take them away. And don't you ever willingly give them up. But there are things we have to fight against. Central bank digital currencies are one of them. And um, gun confiscation. And gun, the anti-gun stuff. And the best way to fight against the anti-gun thing is to vote with your dollars, so to speak. Um, make sure that you have guns. Make sure that you have ammunition. Uh, here as an American, if you're in another country, well, you're already in a bad position. But uh, you might want to consider moving to America. Oh, America's going to fall apart. Yes, it is. America already is falling apart. But uh, having guns and uh, the ability to defend yourself is going to um, help to maintain your freedom and personal liberty. So... Um, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso trusteth in the Lord, he shall be safe. I'm not worried. Joe Biden and all the liberal left and whatever else, they can do whatever they want, say whatever they want against guns. But uh, you're not getting mine. Okay? Ever. You can get them after the Lord says, come up hither. And I go up to be with the Lord, then you can confiscate my guns. Um, till then, no. No. That isn't happening. And uh, as the Lord uh, provides for us, I will uh, continue to um, make sure that we have enough. I'll say it that way. Um, and God forbid that I, I should ever have to use them on people, but uh, if I ever have to, and it's justified in whatever, I'm not going to feel bad about that. Uh, Christians have fought hard down through the years and resisted tyranny and have shed blood as a result and you have to realize that sometimes that's the only option um, people just uh, they want to come and they want to hurt you and hurt your family and you can't allow that um, two years ago when we had the intruders come onto the property and just drove right back past no trespassing signs and everything else. Just came right back in 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was glad to be armed. Because without that, it would have been a very bad situation. I would have had to end up fighting the guy. He had a baseball bat. And uh, he got that out at first. And then when I had the gun pointed and said, you know, uh, get your hands up. And he did. Dropped his bat. But what would have happened to me if I didn't have that? I would have had to also have a weapon or just no weapons at all, you know. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, don't give up your firearms if you're an American. And um, if you're not an American, uh, well, sorry about that. You already gave yours up. That's a problem. So that's going to be it. See you in the next video.